Let's bring in Liberal MP for the seat of Groom, Garth Hamilton. Garth, thank you so much for your time tonight. What are young Australians telling you that they want in terms of their aspirations for housing? Amanda, it won't surprise you. The, the, the next generation is just like ours. They want their own home. The, the Australian dream still exists in their hearts. They want that. And that's a, a fundamental part of what it is to be Australian, I think. Yeah. You know, a house just isn't a, a, an economic proposition. This is where you start your family. This is where you, you have that base. It's your connection into community. It's so much more than, than, than just something that you buy. It's, it's your place. It's your part of Australia. And I think that's, that's something that we need to continue to, to make sure that we see, you know, the next generation believe that they can have. Yeah, I think that's right. There's a housing shortage and it's biting hard, but the government's adding 900,000 people a year to Australia's population. Where does that kind of a policy end? Well, i tell you where it is right now. What, what it is, is is absolutely fuel on the fire right here. Uh, there's an incredible demand uh, imbalance in the housing industry right now. There's nowhere near enough supply. Demand is high. And what we're going to do is just make that demand even higher mm. in, in, a, in a way that we, we, we've never seen before. As the quote from Peter Dutton is, we've never had this level of immigration coming through in such a short period of time. Mm. So this will make things much, much worse. If you're a young person out there trying to buy a home, this will make things worse. And if you're already on that, on that ladder trying to get ahead, um, what this does for your prospects for future, it really, really just makes a, a very messy situation much, much worse. It's got to be pretty demoralising for people who are trying to get that first go in the market. The infrastructure that we have as a country, whether it's roads, rail, even things like water and sewerage, is all under strain at the moment. And it seems as though it's struggling to cope with our present population. Does Labor have the plans and the progress happening on that infrastructure bill that's needed to be able to cope with an increased population? Uh, look, I, I don't think there's any doubt about this. This is probably the biggest flaw in Labor's plan altogether. Now, the previous government, we had a $120 billion infrastructure pipeline in place, and that was roads, bridges, all the little things we need to make our communities work, to make our place livable. Uh, now, every single project in that pipeline is now under review. Worse than that, every program that helped councils fund their roads and bridges is also under review. Oh, really? That's so terrible. The, absolutely. The mechanism, not just the projects, but the mechanisms we had just to keep maintenance, just to keep roads uh, in the state that we need them, that's under pressure as well. So not only is there not enough homes, the infrastructure we need is under pressure. Um, this is not a great situation. Now, the city deals were a part of a cohesive strategy to provide infrastructure that made cities tick, cities grow, but also separate cities connect well in a way that allowed people to commute and get to work and get home safely. What's happening with those? So at the moment, they are absolutely under review as well. They're under threat. And I think this is something that we need to talk more about because part of those city deals, particularly where they were in, uh, investing in uh, priority development areas, mm. were absolutely going to open up supply. And, and best, instead of trying to have some sort of a scheme with the, of the government paying for uh, new housing, they were opening up opportunities for private investors, mm. for developers to get in there and build the supply that we need. And that, that's an a obvious way for us to get ahead. That's a government trusting Australia to solve the problems that it has. Uh, and, and, and it's a shift, fundamentally a shift, Amanda, away from driving demand into driving supply. That this is where, whatever the answer is, it's in this mm. area of, of driving supply that we need to be focused. So social housing is always going to be a part of the landscape. Um, obviously, you only want it to be small in the sense that you'd like for most people to have the means to be able to um, cope in the private market and succeed in the private market. But does the way that Labor's pushing for so much social housing represent a certain giving up on a cohort in our community? Or should it be seen through the lens of compassion for the way people are struggling with the cost of living right now? Well, look, certainly, and I will speak in my area, we're seeing a lot of people come in from out west to Toowoomba looking for housing, expecting that in a, in a city like Toowoomba there'd be housing. And of course, they come in, they find there's none. And so I have a lot of compassion for people in, in you know, very difficult situations trying mm. to get ahead. And look, I think providing that social housing, it's a, you know, a responsibility of the state government, something very important for us. But it's, it's less than about 3% of the need. 
Right. And the problem isn't being caused by that 3%. The problem is being caused by supply for the other 97%. Of the month. That's a yeah. really important distinction for people to understand. Absolutely, and, and that shows you very clearly where the problem is. If we're going to address the problem, mm. if we're going to help you get into a house, it's by providing supply uh, for everyone else.